Well, welcome back, folks. I thought since I've been discussing in other videos uh, rust removal products, such as this EvapoRust, you probably heard me reference it when I was discussing the rust removal on that Yamaha GT80 uh, fuel tank a short time ago. I thought I would do a, a brief uh, shop talk discussing in more detail these products. What you see in the camera right now are two similar products. They're both non-acidic uh, rust removal liquids. Uh, as far as I can tell, these are similar in chemical composition. They're just dis two different manufacturers. And both of these are readily available in my area at virtually any hardware store or big box store. They're uh, all over the place, so getting them is not a problem. A little bit on the pricey side per gallon. That's how these are commonly sold in my areas by the gallon, and I think maybe you can buy them by the quart, buy it by the quart, but I usually buy a gallon at a time. And I usually keep one to two gallons of, well, lately I've been using Evaporus, but I've had good luck with, with the, this rust remover product as well. The reason that I uh, use these products now, and again, being non-acidic, they're very safe to use. And if you look at this label here, you can see it talks about being non-toxic, biodegradable, safe on the skin and eyes, and reusable. Um, it's very safe to use. You can get it on your skin, and you don't have to worry about being burned like you would with an acid. And I'll come back to the acid in just a moment. I normally do wear gloves when I use this, but it's, it's very benign to use it. But it is considered biodegradable, and it is reusable. In other words, you can reuse it over and over and over. Now, these products do have a shelf life. Uh, after you've used the product a number of times, you'll discover that it just takes, it's taking uh, lo far longer than it normally would to uh, remove uh, the rust from the item that you're trying to work on. And I find at that point it's, it's just easier to dispose of it and buy, buy more and continue on with your project. This product is uh, quite sensitive to the temperature of the environment. Uh, that is, they work better at warmer temperatures. I found anything above 65 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit or, or even warmer than that. The uh, warmer it gets, the better they seem to work. Anything below about 60, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, the uh, effectiveness seems to drop off, or at least the duration of the time it will take for the product to do, uh, do their thing seems to be effective. And in fact, the labels do reference the fact that they are temperature sensitive. So if you use this kind of product, uh, typically you want to do it in a relatively warm environment. If you have an unheated space and you're working in a winter, uh, I wouldn't even recommend trying this until you can get your item and the product into a control location where you can get up above 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, otherwise, it, you probably uh, aren't going to be happy with the result. Let's talk a little bit about uh, acidic or acid-based rust removers. Phosphoric acid, which I do have here in my shop, I don't use it very much anymore, is a relatively safe acid to use. Uh, in fact, uh, most coal products, soft drink colas, uh, I'm not going to use brand names here, but look on a can or bottle of virtually any cola, beverage and you will see phosphoric acid as one of the ingredients. If you get it on your skin, you will probably notice a little burning. You certainly don't want to get it in your eyes and you don't want to get it on your clothes because it will damage your clothes. But it is relatively safe. But with the availability of these products, uh, I don't see the need to use any acid-based product, even phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is readily available, at least in my area, at any hardware store also. It is commonly used to etch and clean concrete and bricks before painting or to remove uh, oils and those kind of things. If you're going to paint a, floor, a concrete floor, for instance, quite often you'll etch it with phosphoric acid. And f for that very reason, it's readily available quite often in paint departments at hardware stores. It's also sold in farm stores, at least in my area, as milk stone remover. And as I understand it, it's used by farmers, uh, dairy farmers, to clean their uh, milking equipment. But it is uh, phosphoric acid based. So it's readily available. 
Uh, let's talk about the more aggressive acids such as hydrochloric and sulfuric acid. Uh, I do not recommend using either one of those items for rust removal. They will, in fact, work to a degree. They are awful aggressive acids on steel. I do have a partial gallon here that I use occasionally, rarely, but occasionally for uh, stripping plating off of zinc plated parts or chrome plated parts. That's the, the primary use of it in, in my shop. I do not do any rust removal with it and I don't even like having it around. It's very aggressive. It's dangerous in fact. If you don't take proper precautions with uh, either one of those acid, acids um, and you get it on your skin, you certainly don't want to get it in your face or in your eyes. You'll be very sorry. You'll have, you'll have a medical emergency if you get it in your eyes. Uh, it's hard on your clothes, it's hard on everything around uh, the environment, and it's just flat out, uh, I find it dangerous and uh, I don't use it if I can avoid it at all, and certainly not for rust removal. Now in terms of preparing a part, uh, a rusty part, which is you know, part of our stock and trade on these old Japanese motorcycles to use this, this type of product, and, and either one of these again will work. I think they're the same chemical composition. The labels are almost identical in terms of the verbiage. So I think they're just two different uh, manufacturers or suppliers. I um, normally will, if an item is particularly rusty, that heavy built up layers of rust, I will uh, normally either wire wheel the part if possible or take it over to my blast cabinet and blast away and remove the worst of the rust before I immerse it in one of these liquids. And the reason I do that is it takes less time to strip the part, remove the rust. I found that if an item is very, very rusty, uh, like the inside of that Yamaha fuel tank I did the other uh, video, I did the other, I found that if the item is particularly rusty, like the inside of that Yamaha fuel tank I recently did, uh, it takes a long time with one of these products to get down to bare metal, if ever. And I have found that sometimes if there's enough buildup, these products will struggle to get down to bare metal. So I'll strip them first mechanically, then I'll finish the process by immersing them in this product and they'll strip it right down to bare metal. That's my uh, review of the products that I use and how I use them and why I use them and what I don't use. Any issues, thoughts, questions, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.